My first. Right, think you're good. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'd like to call the <coughs> East Dundee Planning and Zoning and Historic Commission meeting of Thursday, June the second, to order. Roll call. Member Feck? Here. Member Stenick? Yes. Member Riz Browder? Yes. yes. Chairman Myers is absent. Member Scarpelli? Here. Member Brunner? Here. Member Kruger? Here. Okay, uh, the first item on the agenda is to appoint an acting chairman for tonight's meeting. I would like to make a motion to appoint Frank Scarpelli as the acting chairman for tonight's meeting. There's a motion and a second. I second. Who seconded? Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Uh, Feck. Aye. Stenick. Here. Uh, Here. It would be uh, yes. 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 Uh, Ray's Browder. Yes. Uh, Scarpelli. Yes. Runner. Yes. Kruger. Yes. Okay. The <coughs> next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the May 5th, 2022. Uh, meeting. Uh, we all had in our packet the information from that meeting or the minutes of that meeting. Does anyone have any questions or comments? If there are no questions or comments or changes. I would entertain a motion to approve those minutes. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes of May 5th, 2022. I'll second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. You can do a voice call. Oh, voice, yeah. voice, voice call. Yeah. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, uh, is there anyone in the audience tonight that would like to speak about anything not on tonight's agenda? Uh, hearing none, we will move to the Historic Commission agenda item. A certificate of appropriateness for signage at 202 Barrington Avenue. Uh, repair and replace an existing front covered porch and replace the roof section with a canopy with signage. Uh, new signage located on the canopy. Uh, does staff have a report or anything they'd like to give us beyond what was in our packet? Uh, no, I, I, we just feel that the um Whatever they do as far as remodeling up front, it should be consistent with what was previously there. It may not have to be a flat roof, but some sort of covered porch is what we would we would think would be consistent with uh, historical property. Okay. Anything else from staff? No. No. Uh, hearing none, uh, I know we have two people from the applicant in the audience. Um, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, well, if you don't mind, just coming to yeah, the appreciate it. Just state your name, your full name. And we don't need to do a swear-in on this one because it's not public. Yeah. 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 Correct. Well, my name is Adam Tagley. I am from PG Construction, Inc. out of Cary here. Um, we are working on the remodeling of over at 202 East Barrington. Um, yeah, I'm here for uh, the appropriate signage um, and then the porch. And we're doing the porch portion, but I'm actually not doing the, um, the canopy portion that they had. Um, Given you guys the info for, so I'm here to state my case. I guess uh, we were looking to do a um, uh, an awning, like an awning covered canopy, um, like they have in a couple of the buildings on the street there. Um, and yeah, I'm just here to speak on behalf of Meadowdale Management there. So um, I think we've seen what you have here. Is this a, the picture that you have? A, accurate representation of what you're going to do? Well, I think the picture doesn't points. have like, you know, obviously we're going to have handrails and, uh, you know, like, like a you know, yeah. railing and things like that yeah. around it. But as far as the top of the, uh, I believe they got that from the only company. So yeah. So I think, yeah, I'd like to, I mean, maybe let's talk about it in pieces. Sure. So is there, if you want to talk about the, the deck first and the railings and then Can go, I go. chime in? Because I'm also talking. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, please. Okay. So, if I can add to what he said, mm -hmm. okay. My name is Brittany and I'm an owner of, an owner of Meadowdale Management Company, and we are now at 202 Barrington Avenue, right next door. I'm sorry, can you please repeat your name? I Brittany you. Hudson. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just here to, I'm also a resident of mm -hmm. East MD. 
Um, I love our historic district and its new look that it has. It looks great down there. I'm here to present my case to remove the top portion of the porch that you're asking us to keep, I guess. So um, I kind of been doing my homework and I wanted to point out some things um, that we've been working with the city in um, renovating this beautiful building next to us. And I've thought a lot about it, I put a lot of effort into it, along with a lot of money. And I want it to look good because it's the face of not only our company, but it is in the historic district of my town. So um, that being said, um, as far as it being, I, I think what you wanted was for us to put the porch back up to what it was. But in, from what I've dug up, I don't think that that porch was even historically accurate to the actual building. Here's a picture of, you may all have a picture, I don't know, but here's a picture of the building next to it. This is the porch that existed there until we tore it down because we were having structural issues. We had to, um, not only this was the lack of David and probably getting ready to fall down. Um, we had to do tuck pointing because we were getting moisture inside mm -hmm. the building. Um, so this, as an example, um, this porch here, this, the home, the, the building, because I don't know what it was, if it was a home or a business, it is now in, um, it's, I think, a multi-use zoning um, building. So this um, is an actual Greek, a farmer's Greek revival style home, is what it's called. Um, it was built circa 1865. And I want to show you, I think you have pictures of what we want to do to it. And that is to put up an awning. That's, this is like the best computer generated maybe picture to show you because we don't have a porch here, but we're going to keep the bottom portion of the porch um, there and just put the awning on top. Um, and the village has asked us to put in something more, um, more like this. Okay, this was an example anyway. But um, in my opinion, for example, because this is really like an arts and crafts type of style that you're putting on a Greek revival home. Um, another reason I don't want to put a porch on this building is because we're a business, we're not a home. And I also feel that, um, you know, it's just similar to everything else around, obviously. But um, I want to also show you a picture of the original home, which I have dug up. This is the house, which looks nothing like it looks today. This is the angels. So if you see the porch here, which is the style of the Greek, farmer's Greek revival style, you can see kind of the gingerbreading, but you have, uh, you do have a porch, you know, a, a roof here. I, I haven't found anything where you have a side porch on either side, actually, of the home, like a picture showing what used to be there, but I can tell you that I feel that what we tore down was certainly not Greek Revival style. And in fact, to me, was an eyesore. <laughs> um, and I just tried to make it look better and be also, um, as we did in the back, we, which is, um, the back porch is actually Greek Revival style because it does have the pillars that we kept, which when we tore it down, we had to put all that back as it was, which we did. Um, but to put the canopy on is what we're asking um, the porch, let's see, but we're, we're trying not to spend any more money that we, than we have to, obviously. And being that this isn't, it's not even our building, we're renting it. So we are putting a lot of money into something that is not even ours, okay? Um, when I look for an idea, when I look for an idea, I look to the houses and businesses in town and notice that in the historic district, 
a lot of the businesses have an awning with black and white letters. And that is how I got the idea to put an awning on it with black and white letters. Um, I also wanted to show that your signage code here specifically state, states that all signs shall be of material that was or could have been used in the era the building was designed, built, or renovated to reflect substitute materials with the same appearance may be approved. Sign materials shall utilize colors compatible with the era the building was designed, built, or renovated to reflect. And it goes on to see letters shall be of a style compatible with the era. So we're, we're talking about looking compatible to what the building used to look like. However, if you look, I just want to point out, if you look at pictures of what the buildings used to look like, they all look like this, which again looks like but we're looking at downtown, but we are looking at what is there now, Alianos and all the stuff on River Street. Um, let's see. I'll start what to do. Okay. Um, the awnings um, aren't permanent structures. They're and they look good. I like the awnings that are on there now. Everything conforms. It's unity. It looks nice. Um, but as you can see, there were porches on these original buildings, and none of the historic business buildings have a porch today. Okay? And we have a porch that we tore down, but the, what was actually like a patio or, or like a um, porch on top, but it had a door that opened up to that top portion of the porch. You can see from here what it looked like. Um, mm -hmm. Again, that's Greek revival style. But, um, all, all, these port, all these old buildings um, also show that they had canopies. There's canopies here, but they did, they did have a porch which no longer exists today. And when you're talking about your signage, too, um, you know, it goes back to what I stated earlier. But then if you get down to letter G, it says signs of a period other than when the building was erected may be approved if a special design merit, or if a special design merit. So that's what we're asking is to approve it to be in conformity. It's similar to all the other businesses that have put up the same kind of awning that we would like to put up. And they did not adhere to any of these codes because, as you know, none of, them, none of the new, obviously, canopies have the look of the original building. So with that said, I hope I can kind of get you to understand where we're coming from because I am trying to be historically correct with this building. I am a, I love art, I love history, and I love architecture. I studied it in college, and believe me, I want it to look good. You know, I don't want it to look good. So these are just pictures of what's across the street from us. The awnings, and this is all done. Um, Barrington Avenue with the new, um, I, I know they, these are newer structures, but again, they all conform to the same look. And again, this is River Street, too. So I'm asking that you let us put up an awning for our business that is the same as all the historic buildings in the business district. I, have, I do have other pictures if anybody wants to look at them, but I think I see yeah. everything So I think you, you brought up a couple of, of good points about your specific, I think, situation. I agree your porch isn't from 1865 feels like it's, um, you know, we've talked Victoria. a little bit about it. Yeah, yeah, um, you know, I, I'm comparing it to houses in town, and it looks very, like, reminiscent of, like, a leaded flat roof from about 1900. That's my kind of feel. And, like, the, the, the porch material, too, that was real common 
back then the, the actual planking that you guys have so yeah it's definitely not the original one but you know it is also no one alive ever has seen something different on that building so right so there's that I think the other thing though that you really hit on and I think I, I want a lot of people of my other commissioners to maybe think about is a lot of the, the questions about this building have to do with the fact that I think we all believe it was a residence I mean that's what was built that it was a house and it hasn't been a residence I know for I don't know, how long was Hidden Bay in there? Do you remember? The, that's when I moved in. It was Hidden Bay Lodges. The Rankies have owned it probably since at least the 80s. Yeah, so been. maybe 40 years. It hasn't yeah. been like a house people were living right. in. Um, yeah, I, I believe Carl ran his insulation business out of there actually in the late 60s and early yeah. 70s. So, you know, I, I can see that we could start treating that like a business building. You know, right now we're treating it like it's a residence. And truly, if this is a residence, we, I really wouldn't want to see this type of change done to it. But like the way you're talking about it, you're saying you want it to look like a business district, be a business building, not be a residence anymore. Right. So I'm going to stop on, on that <laughs> um, so you guys can think about that. Uh, yeah, and, and then that, one, that, that picture you showed of Diamond Gems is more for me. That, I'm just that building, I think the one you showed has been torn down. Yeah. Um, that it's would not be there anymore. the back of your uh, building. Because Diamond Jim's doors is facing this side. Yeah. Uh, unless that's the east side. Would that be the building. extension? Or was that the. I thought so too, but I was pointing out. They but, pointed out that there was an extension put on the building here. Yeah, because your your building would be behind Diamond Jim's facing to the yeah. right. Behind it. Br 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 Brittany, oh, can, can you bring it's it? the angle of the picture because if you're standing if that engines is here and our building is here because i look at it today yeah here, here. Yeah, I've looked at this picture in the historic society. Wait a minute, that's not the front door. Yeah, this, 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 I don't know if this will look anything so like it. That's my point. Well, it doesn't look like Diamond Jim's. Diamond Jim's didn't have their own door bar. Diamond Jim's looks like the house, doesn't it? Yeah, that'd be right there. Yeah, but but you might see that. That's like a backyard photo of it. But this would be, so this, the roof line is like this. The roof line is north to south. Their main roof line is, oh, is it? I mean, it's east to west. Yeah, yeah. Our building is facing this way. 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 Our building yeah, so, but I don't even right. see it. I think it's actually this was there before they built the extension, the okay. and that because this looks place. like a gap right there. But from that right. Picture, and yeah, it looks yeah. like they were side by side. Yeah, it from the side. Yeah, it looks like so. so I, I believe it is the same building. It's been added on to numerous times. You can see it from outside. You can see it from inside. Yeah, so the I'm, building is like this on the inside. I oh yeah, for sure. I am seriously. Wonder about the building, right? But <laughs> yeah, do you uh, we've jacked it up and secured it, and hopefully it's not going to fall down on us. Um, so, you know, I think I, I just want to do. May I, may I say something? Yeah, you know, what everybody else is about. Right. So, so my. It's a good argument and point that you bring across with the rest of the businesses yep. having the black awning, but I also understand that those don't have a front yard like this one does. This one, so I kind of um, am not oh, okay. in agreement with having the black awning. I would suggest, if anything, not exactly what the village suggested in mm -hmm. terms of a type of gable, um, but more like a flat with the post in front. And the main reason for that is just Architecturally, it just doesn't fit. And I, I see the other businesses, um, but those don't have front yards. Those are they more in sidewalks. They do have front yards, and however, they've been made into parking lots. concrete yeah. um, mm -hmm. sidewalks. Yeah. Yeah. And over time. Um, if you go down further down, like Joe's, the Heinz, they have kind of a front. They do have grass. But I wouldn't even call what we have a front yard. It's more like the walk, the entry. But the it is the entrance. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think because it is an entrance, and it does need to express some sort of feature, not just um, a fabric aluminum frame awning that just gets sticked on as a canopy. I think it needs to have a little bit more of a presence to preserve that historical feeling. At least um, that's how I feel when I come yeah. into this neighborhood. I think you can, we can get that with the porch that we're going to put in along mm -hmm. with how we're redoing the front of the building and just making it overall look really nice. But um, 
I think if you look at the other buildings that have bushes in front uh -huh. of the street and they have a little bit of a patch of grass, they they may not have an awning, but they have that as well. You know, and I think just from a business point of view and not a home point of view, right. we're, again, we don't own this building. That I understand, and I have seen and a lot of businesses, oh, I'm sorry. No, well, I was going to say, too, that this awning is not changing the structure of the building in any way. It's, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. easy on and off. Yeah, it's, um, but I have seen a lot of other businesses that still maintain that historical integrity and that feel of that presence of the entry. Um, I, so. I, okay, I understand uh -huh. exactly what you're saying, but to me, that's a home, but mm -hmm. you're walking. Yeah, this is a business. But I've seen businesses like But that. also, do you see how plain that house is? I mean, as a building, without without the, without the porch, mm -hmm. it's plain. Yep. All the other bu buildings in town are very plain fronted with an awning and no porch. But if you look at the old, you know, going back to what it originally looked like, they had awnings here, okay, and they had this porch here. Well, none of them have a porch. Mm -hmm. and they all have an awning. And I mean, that's, that's my biggest argument is that I, I am in the same, and it says in your code, to be similar, right here and under B, to be similar on like all of your other buildings. Mm -hmm. It's the surrounding ones. Right. right. And that is exactly mm -hmm. what I'm going for. I said I walked around. I even I did take pictures of the porches across the street okay. in town and all around uh -huh. of different porches to get an idea of what we might want to do for the front. But then when I it, it like a light bulb went off, like, what am I doing? Look at everybody else's awning. Why why are we going to put a porch on when we're a business like everybody else? So that saves us money. Yeah, money. there's a also it looks really good. But I, I do understand where you're coming from. I just argued it. Don't agree. Yeah. <laughs> there's, so there's there's two parts to this that you guys have to consider. There's no. the A and then mm -hmm. uh, the porch part, and then there's the uh, mm -hmm. the signage. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. Yep. When you guys are mm -hmm. doing this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the awning that you are proposing, it's very similar to DC cabs or yep. other businesses downtown. Right. Um, any detail on what type of rail you're going to... I, I, well, because I was told, and this wasn't like, this is my first time meeting yeah. Adam, actually. Um, I was thrown in to this because Bob happened to be out of town for this meeting. And my brother could not make it tonight. But I have been doing almost all the renovating of the inside of building and actually got a little pissed about, I don't know if you heard about the back side of the building, but, um, but I'm very much into keeping it looking good and historical. So that being said, the porch, I was told, had to be the same exactly as what we took down, mm -hmm. exactly. And I'm like, exactly? Because if they're going with what the era is for the style of the home, that is not even correct, what, is, what we took down. The back side was more correct, the front side, not even close. So, so and I even looked up, um, if you just Google farmers, um, Greek revival style porches, mm -hmm. you'll see that it looks very much like the old, house that you have a picture of mm -hmm. floating out there. The porch on that old house has, I call it gingerbreading all mm -hmm. the woodwork mm -hmm. of, of what is more of a Greek revival style home. I wanted to put up something more like that to begin with, and then they told me, no, you can't, it has to be exactly mm -hmm. the same. And then I was like, well, can we just do the awning then? Because that's exactly the same as all the other business. Nice. And so here we are. <laughs> yep. So no plans so for any... I, we don't know. have the plans because we didn't want... The architect said to wait to see what happens at the meeting. They want to draw plans and 
have to redraw plants. That's understandable. <laughs> Are you thinking of maybe like a wrought iron or? or? For the, no, it would be wood. wood. Um, okay. I, I, I think it could possibly stay kind of to what it was on the bottom, which has, I did get um, the post toppings for two bigger ones here mm -hmm. that are round and then squared off um, these because what I did was went around and looked at porches to homes that were like this home. And I took pictures, which I have on my phone if anybody wants to see, um, of what the entryway to all these homes look like. So that is what I did. And I kept these little spindles that are there because they are already bought them. And, uh, and they told me it had to go, it had to be like it was. Mm -hmm. So all I could do from there was put, I got to pick the tops out of what I wanted on top of the rail. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be very simple, you know, it's going to be minus this, so you're going to be walking up, and it's not going to look like that. I don't know, I don't have a rendering, I mean, we can bring you a rendering of, of it, if that's what you want. I don't have one. I only have the com this computer generated awning and no porch. <laughs> <laughs> so that doesn't really help you, but I can tell you that it's, what we have is this, the bottom portion that we were working with, with like I said, the top Be side. similar to that. But and then the you're just walking with the, yeah. in with yeah. the awning. So it's like four by fours with the decorative almost looking like vases and ball caps on top of yeah. them for the yeah, posts. Yeah, we'll have then balls, like, uh, balls, yeah, balls. Yep. Yeah. And, then, and then the other ones are just square. Square up, yeah. yeah. Like kind that. of Romanesque because yeah. we're talking Greek. Yeah. Bible. And so I know on the back of your building, you've done a lot of work there. So would it be, would, would you think it'd be like those types of railings, that actual lumber and the spindles that you have on the back, it'd be I that same material? Yeah, okay. Yeah, we just wanted the caps. Yeah, I don't, we just wanted the caps. Is it cedar? Is it cedar, Adam? Uh, it is, yes, it is cedar. And then with cedar tone, is it? So, uh, it's going to so be painted. It's going to be painted. Okay. Yeah. And what, what, so are you going to paint it like gray or are you going to paint it? We haven't discussed it. The front of, like, I ended up changing the front door that they, the men put in and didn't ask me. <laughs> and I said, well, no, we're changing that. Because Matches your drawing. Like <laughs> 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 it does not look like the Greek Revival style that we should yeah. be going with. So I've been looking at some doors that I think will look nice with maybe a window on top. Um, kind of like a shaker, I call the shaker style, but I put them on the inside, I forget what they're called. They have like three, there are three panel doors, so it's like okay. the top right. with the, the window and then put two down. So I kind of want to do that in front with the black door because we have the black, um, you know, shimmer, shutters. And in the back, we're going more with a gray, um, because the side of the house is gray and white, and then the back is gray. So I would imagine, and I haven't discussed it with my brother, I think we kind of briefly discussed mm -hmm. it being gray. Okay. Like, like the side yeah. of the house. Yeah, and then you're gonna replace the shingle, I mean the, the shutters. I know you have some shutter issues after All removing. All those shutters are from, yeah, yeah. from Reiki's, you yeah. know, from, from them. So we haven't, I don't think we've, I don't know if you would know, but I. I know we still have windows to do, mm -hmm. so we're waiting, oh, and yeah. then, you know, all the shutters. Like that. So you're going to yeah. keep shutters? Yeah. Okay. And, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, that's. Okay. Maureen? I don't think I have any additional questions or thoughts outside of the conversation we've already had. Okay. Um, I have some questions of staff. So. Chris, I, whether I'm sad to say it or whatever, I was uh, on this board, not the village board, but the planning uh, commission back when the historic commission was formed back in the late 90s. Um, are either of you aware, is, is there a specific date era that we are trying to replicate in our downtown area or is that something for the 
commission to discuss I, I, to set I, I put think in place. In, in, in past experiences, it's it's more or less what the commission thinks is appropriate for that building. Okay. Because yeah. some buildings aren't as old as others. Right. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Um, and uh, with regards to standards and criteria that are in our codes, we can talk either after this application is done or at another meeting about different things we'd like to see, possibly, or yeah, request I mean, of the village yeah, board. Yeah, I, I think I think in the code there's some there, there's a chapter about setting some standards that I don't know that were ever that were ever established. Yeah, I, I'm unaware of any yeah. standards that were really right. ever. So set. it's been an objective to, uh, to each individual situation of right. what you think would go uh, with that particular building. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I guess for the applicants. Uh, so when I went after I got the, received the packet, I went around. I saw the old Doderline Lumber uh, office, which is I believe right on the railroad there. Uh, it seems to have con a concrete stoop with railings, with wrought iron railings running up to the front. Uh, the uh, Nona Sandwich Shop has that similar concrete steps, as does the front of Diamond Gyms. Um, did you guys ever consider a, a concrete, just a concrete stoop with railings? No. Okay. okay. <laughs> that's because that's what we were told. Right. From what yeah. I was yeah. told, it, it had to be exactly like that. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, because when I look around, a lot of the other businesses are just right at ground level, so you're able to walk in off mm -hmm. the sidewalk, or you might have one step up to like East Side Cafe, you've got one step up to get in the door. Uh, whereas the, the buildings that seem to have a floor that's a couple feet above elevation seem to have concrete steps, although uh, uh, I'm not opposed to the to the wooden steps either. Um, I think those will look nicer yeah, yeah. to make them to look nice. Yeah. Um, and then other than that, I, I just... When I look at all the other buildings in town and we've allowed awnings and signage on the awnings, I, I just have a hard time. Uh, even though this did exist with some type of structure, uh, I, I just believe that if they're within the era, that we, we should allow our applicants to town that want to locate in our town and operate in our town some freedom to pick and choose within the era. Um, that's just my personal feelings. Agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like my, my feeling from earlier, it's it's really this, it's the business versus the house thing. Like I really would think if it was a, a residence, I would really want it to try to look the way it is. And uh, I'm being on the, the planning and zoning committee and doing this, you know, obviously there's been decisions made throughout the history yeah. of our town. What we're trying to do now is preserve what we have. Right, so I think naturally we're going to be conservative. I mean, you know, you can only get rid of it once. Um, you can keep it forever, right? So, or until it needs to be rid of it. <laughs> um, but, yeah. you know, so, you know, and I understand, um, I definitely understand, like, the, the, the challenge of this house. And, I, and, and you can see that based on your presentation. You're looking at all these other things. You're walking around town. You know, like, like I, think, I think you and I kind of had kind of the same idea of what would be a, a, a replacement from the era, but it isn't even the era. But then once again, this house was added on a whole bunch of times. So what era is it really from anyway? Right. You know, right. um, the same, Certified you know. 1865. Yeah, that's <laughs> well that's the, that's the front with the plaque. Yeah, it says that, you know. You know, I have an 1895 house that has a 1930 edition on it and a 2000 and something edition on it, you know. And we try to make it look like the 1895 as much as we can, but you know, what can you do? Inside um, it's much older. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but without water, like mine. Yeah. Sure. Um, so yeah, it's you know I, I think what 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 is good about the awning is that it is not a very destructive thing to do to the property. You guys have already tough pointed; it looks really nice. Yeah. You know that just happened, um, and uh, you know I, I see the benefits for it, and I see. Why, you know, I could see someone down the road, you know, we should allow them to put a, a porch back on if they want to. That's, that's what I would say. I mean, I think if we decide to go with the awning, 
a porch should be a porch roof should be acceptable 20 years from now if someone wants to match it back we wouldn't say no you got to keep it an awning forever you know clearly for maybe 120 years it had a porch on it um and a, a roof i really and i'm glad you explained the way you're doing the porch because the the, the lower half because that makes me feel a lot better on, on how that's going to look um, you know the drawing was you know, it was unacceptable <laughs> with no railings or anything. So, um, so, so, yeah, I, um, yeah. Okay, do any of the commissioners have any, we've been focusing primarily on the, the porch and then the awning, but the other portion before us tonight is the signage going on the awning. Does anyone have any concerns regarding the signage? Nope, no. Any discussion? It matches yeah. the rest of the town. It's been Okay. Um, staff, would you like one motion or two motions? Oh, one motion. One motion. Okay. So uh, at this time, uh, unless there's any other comments from the applicants or from the commission, uh, at this time, I would entertain a motion. So, oh. Is That's there right. something we can do? to enforce the discussion that was made in regards to the porch if we approve this. Um, it's I, approved with that yeah. caveat, not with any of the pictures that are in here. Right, I, uh, I don't know if staff has a preference, but I would say whoever crafts the motion could craft it either recognizing the minutes of this meeting and what was said and discussed at this meeting or if you want to lay out the specific criteria for the porch in the motion, uh, I, would, I would think we'd have the freedom to do that as well. Yeah. Um, would you guys be comfortable with referencing the minutes and what you said? Yeah. Yeah, because we'll have, this is all video recorded. Yeah. That's why yeah. we have you speaking up there against, to, against yeah. the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I think that's easier okay. than trying to lay it all out um, explicitly, unless you have a... Could they send staff and update it? Uh, well, I, I have a good idea what they're yeah. planning to do. It's the same yeah. uh, spindles and, and handrail that they have on the back of the port. At the, mm -hmm. on the and back then with the caps the on the 4 by 4 yeah. front. Right. Yeah, yeah. Whatever I, they call I, I, Yeah, I don't think we need any additional information. Okay. Good. Cameron, would you like to make yes. a motion? <laughs> <laughs> so, I would like to make a motion to approve the certificate of appropriateness for signage I guess, and, uh, signage for 202 Barrington Avenue, including the replace, repair and replace the existing front porch cover, replace the roof section with a new canopy with signage. Uh, new signage will be located on the canopy. This includes uh, renovation of the porch, uh, which will follow the specifications as outlined in the minutes of today's meeting. There's a motion. Is there a second? I second it. I'll second. Motion to second by Tony Kruger. Okay. Member Feck. Any, I, oh, any I, further discussion? Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Beck? Aye. Stenick? Yes. Ray yes. Breyer? Uh, Scarpelli? Yes. Brunner? Yes. And Kruger? Yes. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, new business. Uh, is there any new business from any of the commissioners, okay. Uh, other business? Um, I do have one thing that I would like to bring up, and um, Chris, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, uh, and thank you, Frank, Franco, Franco or Franco? Franco. Franco, for sending us uh, uh, this information as I may have read it 20 years ago, yeah. but it, it wasn't as refreshing as it was now. Um, I don't know that, that staff is necessarily following what this says here, and I'm not here to berate you. I'm just here to say that maybe we should change it, because in all my years of sitting on the commission and dealing with the historic commission, uh, Chris, it says in here that the building inspector will get us an application within five days of being submitted for us to then decide if we need legal legal to look at it, things like that. And I don't know that we've ever gotten an application within five days. It typically comes with the packet. Mm -hmm. So I'm just I'm thinking that we should probably amend this 
Because if some app, if we deny some applicant and they say, well, did you send it to the commission within five days of me turning it in? Or, or I'm not an attorney, so maybe have the attorney look at that and see if, if we need to amend it just so that we're not in violation. Because I, I also believe Branko had, had noticed that there doesn't appear to be uh, a, a date or a, a prerequisite for them to apply. Okay. So in other words, like 35 days in advance of a meeting, 15 days in right. advance. Right. Is that correct? Yeah. So there's a, so they could turn it in five days before the meeting, and then we can hand it to you in five days, and then or they. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. See, so, I, so I, I think there might be more than one correction. Right. So maybe we need yeah. to say we need it 14 days or. Yeah. Or 21 days yeah. prior to a meeting before right. it can be put on yeah, the agenda yeah. for proper yeah, review. Yeah, the, so. other, the other problem with codes is they can be interpreted many different <laughs> ways. <laughs> right. um, but yeah, I mean, it just says an application for a certificate of appropriateness. Now, this application was dated May 2nd, um, and obviously we're meeting here. We're within the 35 days of hearing their application. But yeah, I, I just, I just when I saw that, uh, yeah. And it kind of makes sense because, I mean, the commission may decide that they want to have an architect look at it or whatever. But I think a lot of that is, is initially weeded out by, by you, yeah. by staff, mm -hmm. before it comes to us. Right. You obviously did yeah, a bunch of work before you sent us the packet. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so yeah, we, can, we can have a look at that. Okay, yeah. And then, I know, does the, does the commission, do we want to... Are we fine dealing with it on a case-by-case -case basis, or do we want to see if the village board is interested in setting some hardline criteria? I would love that. I would love, you know, like setting a criteria like they do in other municipalities. Can I? It's hard to so, do that. No, go ahead. No, I was just saying, in this, the we have the old and the new together coming together. I think sometimes it's a little, the variables change, and it's hard to do that when you got an old building like this one yeah. on the street. How can you set a set ground rules when you have a building that's you know unless you want to tear it down, start over? It's, it's harder to do it. That's what I feel. But it does it does happen in other municipalities. I work throughout municipalities throughout the whole United mm -hmm. States, and there are set criteria and guidelines. Now you're right. You know you could have a more of a modern building, or yeah. a building that's uh -huh. like a 60, 80 year right. difference, but you could set a criteria, you know, you could say ornamental iron, you could say wood handrail, you know, you could mm -hmm. do little things like oh. that. Maybe it doesn't have to be. Well, that's what I mean. That's what it made it sound like it was gonna be like. Well, it's a, it would be a guideline, like a yeah. some like to follow. Okay. But there's many places that do that and have it. That's still flexible. Well, that's when it would have to be yeah, in front. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, right now our guideline is, well, if you make it look exactly the same, <laughs> there won't be a problem. Yeah, and to <laughs> her point, there yeah. was many errors, yeah. and it's true. We yeah, all see yeah. that, and you yeah. pointed it out with your house. But, you know, we, I think, um, you know, being a new person to this community, um, I like to see, like, uh, what other municipalities, for example, like Long Grove has done, right, and how, or Lamont, you know, you, How, were you reading my mind? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, I think it's such a beautiful community. We could oh, bring it, it. We could elevate it a little bit more mm -hmm. with small little adjustments, adjustments or criteria. Right. Like I said, I'm new to this so, this neighborhood, and maybe what, what, a lot of you were born here. I what I've know. seen other towns do, um, for example, where I intern at Lake Bluff, it's a North Shore oh, community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the Planning and Zoning Board of Appeals, they were a joint commission, uh, kind of like how you guys are with the Historic Commission. They did joint workshops with the Historic Commission. And they have uh, a set guideline of criteria that they meet. But it's an umbrella wide, right, of the whole village. This, and for example, is the Historic District, which is be downtown. What I would recommend if that's the route you guys want to take um, hold a you know and it's up to Erica and it's up to the board if you guys want to come up with uh, at some one meeting to come up with some research and some guidelines that will help push you guys or point finger along the way 
or update our current criteria, whereas that's what I did in my research, my staff analysis, I can only go by what the code's telling me, mm -hmm. but it's your decision as one body either to take my recommendation or not. And if you wanna hold a joint meeting or something like that in the future, after you come up with your research and your criteria and explain to the village board that you think these guidelines will better help this body make a fair decision and to come up with an image for your historic district. Mm -hmm. And like you said, a lot of things are hodgepodge together, yes. but that's just how it was. Um, and yeah. things also change with boards over mm -hmm. time, but at least if you establish guidelines, it could be consistent. It doesn't matter who's here. Mm -hmm. like Front Chicago board. has their, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Chicago has their own booklet. Now, Chicago is a little bit different, yeah. um, but they do have their own set guidelines in their own yeah. historic district, like sure. the department. So. Yeah. But that, that could be, as an example, there's many communities nearby. That yeah. we could use as reference points. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it could be uh, historic dis district specific here. It mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily have to be the whole town. Yeah, but you know what you're talking about, though. That's not fair to us. <laughs> <laughs> I have to deal with this other I thing. know, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and that's the strength of having a diversity. Right. Right. Yeah. right. right. You have um, different opinions. Yeah, yeah. I, I know that I know that Elgin's historic district oh. is, is very, very strict mm -hmm. in that I. I had a friend who had a building that had inlay gutter system okay. with, with copper gutters inside the inlay and you can't see their copper and wow, he wanted gosh. to replace them with aluminum and they made them put a, put copper in mm -hmm. even, even though you couldn't see them. So something like that is ultimately going to be the village board's decision yeah. of how they want to amend the municipal code. You guys will just be establishing guidelines saying what you feel is a good recommendation to amend the current ordinance in the historic district. Franco, are, are the I would believe similar to ours being available online. Most other municipalities would probably have their municipal code. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So I mean, if you ever want to go out to the internet and look, at, I know Elgin has a very strict. Uh, St. Charles is fairly strict. Uh, a lot of that. I mean, and I, I don't necessarily like to copy anyone, but that's kind of what happens all over with codes. Yeah. All over the place. Refer to your village's strategic plan. What? Yeah. Because the village board took its time to make an image for itself. It's a guiding document. Refer to that. Where does the village want to go? And how can you support the board's effort? Do you know, are you guys up looking to update that? Because I know it, I know it dates to 2003. You could come up to the podium and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Sarah Britton. I'm on the village board. That I. Do you know how old our... It says 19 to 24. Yeah, it's, I think it... 2003. Yeah, mm -hmm. 2003, so we're at about 20 years old. Yeah. This, no, okay, the, the comm plan is what you guys are thinking. Yes. yes. Uh, I, was, I was also referencing the strategic plan, the 19, 2019 to 2024. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, the strategy. Yeah. The strat the strat we were, we we're thinking about the. the, the, yeah, the yeah, and and that's another thing so. that this body would be in uh, its job would to do is, you know, when you guys think it's appropriate mm -hmm. to supplement that, is to also start discussing when you think the village boards should consider an update to a comp plan. That's right. what this yep. body would do. Yep. I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And that is a robust document that takes a long time to update. Uh -huh. It's usually yeah. expensive yeah. and you usually yes. hire a third party. Yes. It's mm -hmm. very technical. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, th I think the last one was done by an outfit called Tesca. And Tesca is huge in Chicago and they're really good to work with. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, with how much our town has changed since yeah. the last time they did it. I mean, you know, we had a big grain elevator and coal bins. <laughs> you know, right downtown. How much have we changed since yeah. 2020? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. I never aged. These <laughs> <laughs> last two years. <laughs> okay, uh, the other item of other business that I have is uh, uh, the village code does say that we, in case Charlie can't make additional meetings, which being a fireman, I'm sure he's going to have various conflicts, is that this group should have a vice chair. And I think you guys should elect somebody, and, and it's an election within us, but you guys should elect somebody other than me. So I'd volunteer to do it if you guys want me to do it. Yes. yes. Yep. Okay. Good with that. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> um, I would suggest we probably put it on the next meeting's agenda. 
Um, if, you, it, unless you think we can do it. You guys it. have quorum right now. If that's something you guys want to do, and it's 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 administrative. It's not like it's a public. Okay. Sure. It's not okay. like it's uh, affecting a, a an applicant. Right. Right. Uh, I'll, I'll make a motion that we appoint Cameron Bruner as our vice chairman for the Planning, Zoning, and Historic Commission. Second. Second. Second Kruger. So I'll take a roll call. Member Feck? Yes. Stenick? Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. yes. Bahar, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I can vote on myself. Yeah. Yeah. Oscar, no, yes. yes. Brunner? Yes. Kruger? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Can you? Yeah. That's better to save the vote. Then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, that means, according to the code, like you're correct, that if the chairman is in here, you will be the vice chairman. Yes. And then we won't have to do the necessary. We won't have to make a motion next yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, unless there's anything else to come before the commission, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'd like second. to make a motion that we adjourn yeah. today's meeting. I'll second that. Uh, you can voice vote that. Uh, uh, voice yeah. all in favor, seeing this by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Now today I got to see how one of these meetings go. And yeah. The recording of it. <laughs> watching it. Ready. Gotta get my Robert's rule of order. Book really read up. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, Sarah already has one, so we have one in our house. Oh, sorry. No, excuse me.